All right. Um, so with the Taylor theorem um, sort of under our belt, let's talk about truncation errors. So what happens, uh, as the name implies, is that truncation, uh, sorry, truncation error arises when you replace some sort of infinite series, it's like with some sort of finite series, okay? So, uh, so if we replace an infinite sum, with a finite sum, then what you're basically doing is truncating this infinite sum uh, and replacing it with a finite sum, okay? So if you have a sum from say j equals to zero to infinity of a j of x, and you write this as some finite sum now, right? plus some sort of uh, higher order terms. Then um, you refer to this thing here as your remainder term or truncation error term, right? So then uh, Rn of x is the truncation error which arises from sort of replacing this infinite sum with uh, a finite sum. Okay. Um, and then in general, it's like what you would expect to have is that the more terms you retain in the infinite series, uh, the more accurate an answer you expect to get. Okay, so in general, <coughs> the larger n is, the more accurate. Approximation. This is not always true, but uh, under um, you know nice conditions, it's like this is true. Right? It's more accurate to the approximation. <coughs> so as we saw before, it's like with the um, the Taylor polynomial, right? Um, you have a remainder term, and we have two ways of expressing the remainder term, which in, which one which uh, involves some polynomial term, um, but evaluated at an unknown point, uh, and another one uh, which involves this uh, integral representation of the, uh, the remainder term, okay, or the truncation error, okay? So what you can do uh, in practice then is that uh, you don't, you know, short of evaluating the integral exactly, which is oftentimes difficult, Right. The other option is to take that um, pointwise uh, estimate you have and then do a worst case analysis. Okay, so, so let me just say the following. Uh, if sort of Taylor's theorem, right, you can, uh, you can collapse Rn of x, right, from this infinite sum in principle, right, uh, into a single term. But it either involves an integral, which may be difficult to evaluate, or uh, some unknown point. Right, um, but okay. So what we can do is perform a worst-case analysis, okay, and let me try to 
give you an idea of what we mean by that. Okay. So I'm going to look at something simple. Uh, in particular, I'm going to look at uh, the approximation of uh, sine um, by its Taylor series. Uh, and the reason why um, that's an easy thing to analyze is because um, you know that the derivative of sine is only is going to be basically sine or cosine up to a certain sine. Um, and you know that sines and cosines are bounded um, in absolute value. It's like by one from above by one. So, so it's easy to do this worst case analysis, right? So let's just see what happens uh, as an example. Okay, so we want to approximate uh, sine of say 47 degrees, right, to within 10 to the minus four, okay? So we know that sine of 45 degrees is uh, root two over two, okay? And well, I mean, you always want to actually, when you're working in sine and calculus, you typically uh, want to express the, um, the angle, it's like instead of degrees uh, in radians. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 47 degrees as 45 degrees plus two degrees but that's equal to pi over four in radians plus pi over 90, okay? All right, so what's gonna happen then is that I, I know the value of sine at 45 degrees or at pi over four, right? I also know its derivatives there. So, um, so what I want to do is I want to write um, sine of x, um, in terms of a series um, which is centered around x0, which is pi over four, okay? So, so I'm gonna have x0 as pi over four, and I'm going to write sine of x as a Taylor series <coughs> about pi over four. So that's going to be the sum from k equals zero to n of the k derivative of f, and f is just uh, f of x is just sine of x, okay? That's some, okay, um, and this is gonna be evaluated at pi over four, which is x zero, divided by k factorial, and then I have x minus pi over four to the k power, right? So this is just the polynomial of the, the nth, uh, polynomial degree n, the tail polynomial degree n, uh, evaluated at pi over four. Then there's a remainder term, Rn uh, of x. Okay, so let's see what happens. So what does Rn of x look like? Um, we know that Rn of x looks like the nth plus first derivative at some unknown point of uh, f, which is sine, okay, divided by n plus one factorial. And then there's x minus pi over four to the nth plus first power. Okay, so how many terms do we need? So how many terms do we need? All right, so we know that the absolute value of Rn at 47 degrees right, is equal to fn plus one at some unknown point c over n plus one factorial times uh, pi over 90 to the nth plus first power, okay? And then, oh, and we have to take the absolute value here. And I'm going to bound the nth plus first derivative of sine by one, because I know again that Derivatives of sine are either sines or cosines up to a sine, and sines and cosines are bounded from above by one. Okay, so I know this is guaranteed to be less than equal to one over n plus one factorial pi over 90 to the n plus one, right? And again, it's like we know that f n plus one at c is less than equal to one because uh, 
absolute value of f n plus 1 at c, right, is either a sine or cosine an absolute value. Okay, all right, so, okay, so this is an upper bound to the error, right, and we want the error to be guaranteed to be less than 10 to the minus 4, I want this thing to be less than 10 to the minus 4, okay? So, now I want um, 1 over n plus 1 factorial uh, pi over 90 to the nth plus first power to be less than equal to 10 to the minus 4. Okay, and you can check that, uh, well, when n is equal to 2, right, you get 1 over 3 factorial pi over 90 to 3, which is 7.089 times 10 to the minus 6. So that is sufficient, okay? And you can check that for, if you just had n equals 1, it's like that wouldn't be good enough, all right? So, all right. So anyway, so that's just an example of how you could uh, apply uh, the, you know, it's like the Taylor remainder theorem. It's like to establish a upper bound uh, to the truncation error, which you achieve by replacing some function by its Taylor polynomial. Uh, and that sort of tells you, um, you know, a way of figuring out how many terms you need to have. It's like in order to be uh, accurate to within your prescribed uh, accuracy level. Okay. So let me just stop here for now. Thank you.